Hi, my name is Donna Jones. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Outreach here at the University of Arkansas School of Art. I know this is probably not quite how you thought your facilities tour of the sculpture studio would go, but we're really glad that you're here and I'm excited to show you through some of the still images of the spaces. This sculpture studio actually resides on the campus that will officially be known as the Wingate Arts and Design District in several years. So I'm really excited to talk a little bit about what that means and show you some of the other spaces that are on that campus. So yes, so welcome to the sculpture studio. This is actually an image of the outside of the sculpture studio. Several years ago, before the amazing Wingate Foundation gift uh, that we were given to build this new facility, we only had about 700 square feet total for sculpture, which if you work in 3D objects, is not really that great of a space. Um, and so our students and faculty really worked through that. And then together we were able to build this new facility. It's over 33,000 square feet. Um, so that's definitely an upgrade from 700. And then it also hosts not only a foundry, a metal shop, and a wood shop, but also a wax, rubber, and plastic casting studio, a 3D printing lab, um, different technologies in plasma cutting, a CNC router, 3D printing. And then it also has several studio spaces upstairs for graduate students as well as different classroom spaces for beginning sculpture, for experimental media arts, and other areas within the sculpture realm. So we'll go in here. And you might be asking yourself, where is the Wingate Arts and Design District, right? Um, so if we look down here at number one, that is where the sculpture studio is located. This number three is the Fine Arts Center, the existing Fine Arts Center on the main U of A campus. And then over here, um, where the number two is, that's where ceramics and print making are. So we kind of make this nice big triangle. The other things that are located on that site are not only the sculpture studio, but also the SOAX Center. So that is our new foundations building for students. It was renovated, an existing building there. And so we have several different um, sessions of the foundations one and two classes going all the time during the semesters. And so if you're an incoming undergraduate student, SOAX is actually where you're going to have your first classes as an art student here. Um, but you might be saying, well, how do I get down there? So the U of A campus ends around here. Here's where the softball field is. And there's actually several bus routes that will go through this way. There's actually a parking lot. And right now it's free. Um, so we hope that that stays <laughs> current. Um, but you can also ride your bike down there. You'll see the trail, the Chalagi Trail is actually part of the Trail of Tears. Um, but there's also a bike trail that coincides with that is part of the Arkansas um, Greenway. So that's part of the Northwest Arkansas Greenway and it rides actually 30 miles north past Bentonville. So a lot of our students that are bike riders um, will go on that path as well. And then just one more kind of micro look at this. So if we're looking at this, sculpture is number one here. SOAX is the gray building here. Then we also share the space with the university library system in their warehouse and also the Faye Jones School of Architecture Design and Fabrication Lab. The rest of this space in the next few years will become home to a brand new 150,000 square foot School of Art campus. Um, so that will host not only expanded studio space for all of our students, our different programs, um, but it'll really be a center part of the community as well. Now the main Fine Arts Center on campus will also be renovated to include additional space and renovated space for the art history and art education programs. In addition to our Fine Arts Library, and our gallery. So we're really excited. This is a great time um, to come and be looking at the University of Arkansas, whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student. And so when we park, um, you'll see scooters. Scooters are very hot right now, as I'm sure they, am, they are where you are too. Um, so it's right along the bike path here, and you can lock your bike here. Um, this is Hill Avenue, and right at the corner there is Martin Luther King. And then when you walk into the space, from the parking lot here. You'll see this elevated part with a gate. And so back behind that area, and here's the front door, 
is our foundry. So this is where students can heat liquid metal and use that to cast. Um, we have several different pours throughout the year. It usually takes a team of at least three people, potentially more, um, to wear the full leather outfits and also to get that heated aluminum or any other material ready to then go pour into the sand pit over here. And so you put your piece that you're going to cast and your mold into that sand, pour that liquid metal in there, and then the sand actually acts as sort of a cauterizer. And so if any of that material gets out of the mold, it doesn't get on you, it gets on the sand. And so it's a really fun thing to watch. It's kind of tense, as you can imagine. Um, not every day you get to see people pour liquid aluminum into a mold. Um, so students are welcome and invited to come. We also offer mold making classes and casting classes too. And so if we go back into that front door, you look down the main first floor corridor. On the right is our gallery space here in the Sculpture Center. So that is open to all students. And we also have visiting artists that will show in that space as well. Or if there are different shows being curated by faculty or other students, they'll be utilizing that space too. And so this is a shot inside. These lights are actually on a hydraulic system. So you can go upstairs and hit a button and they will drop down, which if you've ever had to adjust any sort of track lighting um, in your life and had to get on a, a, a ladder to go and change that, this is a game changer <laughs> for that. Um, but students can also use this space for different um, events, their thesis exhibitions, anything that they're needing to have their work into sort of a more professional um, cube space. And so if we come out of the gallery, on our left is going to be the metal shop, and then we'll walk through to the tool room and the wood shop and the 3D printing lab and the 3D technology center that we call AT3D. So we're going to go in this door here. And so this is part of our metal shop. So the entrance is back over here under the exit sign. Um, this amazing equipment is part of the metal shop. So I would say that it rivals just about any automotive shop and I can say that with confidence because one of our former students and instructors actually renovated a VW bus in this space. Um, so there's actually garage doors on the back wall. So if you need to load in materials, whether they be metal or wood or anything that's quite heavy, um, then you can do that because there's an alleyway that gives you kind of the right of way into those spaces too. So here you can do things like welding, um, you can solder, you can cut metal. This is our plasma cutter, so you'll see these large sheets of metal on the right, and if you want to put those down and cut something out, then there's a different program that you can use, and it will go through and cut those with plasma, which is really fun to watch with protective eyewear, of course. And then if we come back through sort of to that beginning spot when you came in the door, um, you'll see there's different pieces of equipment, um, different safety procedures in place, a lot of space for students to use. And this is sort of coming into that front door of the space just so you get an idea of the size there as well. And then of course protective gear over on the left. Great. And then some of our students that are in the space also have studio areas. So we'll kind of look through those too. But this just gives you one idea of the space that graduate students have in that area. And so going back to the metal, you can see there. And so now we're going to leave the metal shop and walk through the tool room. This might be one of my favorite organized spaces in the sculpture studio because everything has a place. So whether you need screws, nails, wood glue, drills, hammers, anything like that, more than likely you're going to find it in this space and it's going to be in the proper space. And then this is coming into the wood shop. You'll see over here is one of our um, fantastic faculty members, Dave Gibbs, their office there, and a lot of different faculty come through this space as well. A lot of different students have exposure, and it's really great that the foundation students in the undergraduate program are on that same site because you have access to these spaces. You do have to go through trainings, of course, and workshops, um, but if you need to learn how to build something out of these different materials, there are a lot of people on hand, especially things like graduate students and graduate assistants that would be in the undergrad classes to help you learn how to do that. And so this is sort of from that back corner, looking down to the end of the, the wood studio here. And you will see we'll have a forklift. 
Um, so you have to be authorized, of course, to drive that. <laughs> but this is that garage door that I mentioned earlier. So if you're bringing in large sheets of plywood, you can use the forklift to bring those in safely. And then this is coming into the space from the tool shop. So you can see a large overview. And we've got circular saws, table saws, all sorts of materials and different pieces of equipment and different trainings for those two. And then if we walk through the space, so here was the door we came in through. If we walk back here, we can find different pieces of materials and different equipment. And then what we're gonna do is turn around and walk through this door. And that's gonna lead us into the AT3D lab. And so when you walk into the AT3D lab, this is our um, awesome in, uh, faculty member and technician, Vincent Edwards, their dog, <laughs> which I love is in this photo. And we've got um, our CNC router here. So if you're thinking about building furniture, if you need to make a very particular shaped item, maybe you're gonna cast something, but you need to start off with a foam mold or you need to start off with a smaller model of that, um, you can learn about that procedure and how to do that here too. Also, all of the furniture in this space and in the next space was actually built in this facility. Um, so that is really fantastic as well. Vincent has a, an extensive furniture background and design background. And so that's another skill set that students can talk about in their work and also professionally. And this is just another view of that. And then this is when you walk into the 3D lab area. So you're going to see we've got some 3D printers here. We have a laser etcher and cutter there. Um, also different digital stations and scanners. Then there's the laser cutter. It gets a lot of use, as you can tell. And then this is just an example of some of the things that students have 3D printed or scanned or made out of wood. Um, there's really great processes that students can learn and utilize here in the lab. So yeah, and you'll see like this is a rock sculpture, but this was it 3D printed. And you can also see the different colorings. Um, if you need to make a certain sort of latch or some sort of lock on your piece, um, you can also use 3D technology to work with that as well. And then there's the lines, there's Vincent and his dog down there. And these are just the different stations. And you can make an appointment too. That's something really special about all of the faculty and the staff here um, at the School of Art is that if you're not sure how to do something, just reach out, ask a faculty member, ask another student, ask a staff member, um, and they will definitely try to get you connected to the right person to help you with that. And so if we walk out of the 3D lab, which is right here on the right, you're gonna see this scale of lockers. And so if you're a student and you have a class in that space, typically you're gonna to need to stash some things, right? So we've got different lockers where you can put your coat, snacks, materials, whatever you need uh, to keep in there while you're down at the space. And this is just another piece that one of our awesome students made. And then back in the wood shop, if you're going back through it, this is what you can see with some of the table saws there. And then if you're going down the hallway and you continue going on your left, kind of almost right across from the wood shop, you're gonna see the wax, rubber, and plastic casting studio. So when you go in, um, you're gonna see the different stations here. A lot of those fans are used to kind of suck up that exhaust so that you're not breathing that in. And we do have different um, safety precautions in there already. Um, so when you're working with these materials, you wanna make sure that you're safe, um, but you can make different molds and different casts here as well. That's just another shot there. And then a little further down on the hallway, we also have just classrooms. So when you're walking into a beginning sculpture class, more than likely your classroom may look like this. Of course, it'll be configured a little bit differently and I'll show you why it's configured like this right now. Um, but you'll have movable tables, um, different storage facilities. You can see those racks go up quite high. We've got a lot of natural light that come into the space from the tall vertical windows. And then also just a lot of space to work. You can see somebody's got a metal sculpture here somebody's been working on some wood here um, so that it just gives students that really flexible space to do what they need but also has a community area where you can come to your class and talk with your classmates
And so the reason everything was moved over is that this is one of our great, uh, great graduate students, Shelby. Um, they were just finishing up their MFA thesis show work. And so they were using the rest of that space to really work. But you can see the size of the sculptures. And so it really gives you an idea of if you're a student working quite large, what this space means for you. There's no project too large, right, that you can't use the space for. Awesome. And then another facility is the Sand and Slurry Lab. So if you are making um, a piece of work that has been cast, maybe in metal, you can see in the buckets here, you can use this space to put slurry on your mold. So when you're going to actually pour the metal into that mold, um, you've kind of got like a base there. And then you can also sand it off. And I like to equate this a piece of machinery right now to sort of those old time um, mail slots. So when it goes into the bottom, it sucks everything up. And so it can get out of there safely and you're not breathing that in and it's not all over the place. Great. And so this is just a few um, images. These are just a few images of our MFA studios that are also in the sculpture facility. So you can see the students have a lot of space here. Um, they can kind of configure it how they need to, whether that's you know exhibiting work on the walls or storage. And then there's another student, lots of space to just work as well. There's another space. And then if we go upstairs on the second floor, when you hit the landing, um, there's a little community space here. What I talked about with the hydraulic system on the lights, the button is over here. So you shouldn't hit it unless you're really wanting to lower those lights. Um, but this is a nice space for students to just kind of hang out for a bit. Our faculty have their offices here. And then this is turning around and looking at the stairs down the hall. So you can tell because it's really industrial, the, the things we want to highlight are what students can do with these different workshops and labs and technologies. So there's a lot of exhibition space here. So this has just been, you know, when we had to clear out in March. Um, so I was able to get some of the images before we did close um, and go remote. But you can see some people still had their huge paintings there, which were so beautiful. And you can also see that we use those walls a lot because these are all patch tolls. Um, so at that point, we had not um, repainted, but we did have, you know, the, the remnants of all the work that had been up there. And then it, and for some of the studios, um, for the graduate students, if you're upstairs, they actually look over into the lower pieces. And so if you do need to use um, the garage or anything like that, then you can bring those through the bottom levels. And also you just have that community sense of things. You get to see each other and talk to each other. And so these are two of our painting studios um, for two of our graduate students in the Sculpture Center. So you can see they have tons of space, lots of light. And it's nice for students in the undergrad to see these, right? So you kind of get that camaraderie that comes from the graduates and undergraduates and get to see what um, students working in that graduate degree are like. And then a little further down the hall, um, these actually used to be our foundation classrooms, but since foundations now has the new building, the SOAX building that was re renovated, these two classrooms have now become experimental media arts rooms. Um, so here you can see that the students and the faculty had set up different speakers to capture sound in the round there, but they also have um, a booth for sound where you can go and really knock out any extra white noise sounds and then also an editing station there and then they also have a lot of room just for students to get together to work digitally and they also have a lot of equipment here so students get to learn how to utilize that and they also have open space just like you saw down in those first sculpture rooms and so this is just another shot as if you were in that circle where the speakers all were There you go again. So that gives you a little taste of the sculpture studio. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. My email address is Donna S at uark.edu. And so that is spelled D O N N A S at U A R K.edu. And thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a great day.